Hi guys! So today I'm out walking. I'm about six kilometers, six kilometers from my home and this time I walked. It's been a lovely day and now uh, I only have uh, one mission here. I want to make a friction fire with just uh, the materials that I can find and uh, in, in these types of uh, nature and with this climate and now with the snow and everything that is pretty hard and uh, I am going to try to find some stuff that that might work for a hand drill but uh, hey if it doesn't work I can always use a, a bow drill here we have some signs uh, pretty fresh signs of beavers um, there was some more there I think it's a bit hard to yeah And the funny thing is, if you look there, this is like the uh, outlet of a, of a hydro dam, but I hope you can see it. You see there you have trails, tracks. And the beaver makes, yeah, he slides into the water there. That's pretty funny when you see it. I've seen it a couple of times and it's like in an adventure pool. It's like a, a slide right into the water. Unfortunately I don't see a beaver right now but This area here is where I was uh, before when I did uh, some nighttime navigation. Beavers are your friend. So quite a long time ago, a beaver uh, gnawed off this piece of wood, which is now ex extremely dry and nice. So I'm going to use a bit of this. And this bit will be nice. That'll do nicely. That seems suitable. Again the beaver helped by providing this nice piece of freshly chewed birch that can be the, the spindle. So this is going to be the, the fireboard for my uh, Bow drill fire. Inside this is really really dry. To be careful not to make it too thin. We must be able to put it on the ground as well. Well let's make the hole there. But it being dry is not enough, it has to be the right consistency. 
and I should not drop it in the snow, but luckily it was on the other side. So, I'm going to burn in this hole. Just wait a minute. You see, this is the, how it should look. Really nice and black powder. So this is a great, great piece of material. My drill is working as well. I will uh, make a notch, notch in this. Back in a sec. Right, so, let's see it's coming there. I always, I always create a bit of a, yeah, kind of a bigger space under it so that there's a bit more airflow. And it's really important that you do not put your fingers in the hole or drip sweat in there or whatever, because then it won't work. And I have to be very careful because this wood is quite soft, so it's easily happening that the that the drill will uh, will bounce out, and that it will only drill at one side, and it's usually the side where the notch is. So this might work. Number. Sorry that I had to jump out of the shot because I needed to transfer the fire to my my fire here. Because <laughs> I was I had to go out of the snow, you know. So So that's where the fire went.
Well, I'm pretty proud of this. Not because it is my first drill fire or anything, but doing friction fire with just the materials that you can find. When it's like everything is with wet snow and miserable, that was a pretty good one. That was a bit of work. When I came in here, the idea was because I saw a quite a nice variety of, uh, of different types of wood. The, the whole plan was to make, uh, make a fire with a hand drill. So, when I found this, this piece that, uh, that the beavers left me, which is really dry, I thought, well, that might work, because it felt on the... Uh, when, when I felt it, it felt soft enough for it to work. Because you need a bit softer when you're using a hand drill, because you don't really get the downward force. I wanted to show you the floating hand drill technique, but uh, we will save that for another time. Um, because when I started drilling in this, uh, it was pretty obvious that I couldn't get the downward pressure that was needed for this wood to, uh, to that it was going to work. Though I did try with putting a, a more suitable bit because this is quite you will have that quite often either you have with you uh, a dry piece or you find yourself a piece that is going to work and you have to put that onto your drill and uh, it's just you know, I will show you how it is I can remove the the bindings you see you, you, you cut them both diagonally and then they fit in like this and you wind them in and that works. So that's a bit of work but it's a, it's a nice trick. If this one works and this doesn't but is a good drill, attach these things together. But it was all for nothing but <laughs> because it didn't work. But I was pretty certain that the same piece of wood would actually work with a bow drill and uh, so I went on to make a bow drill. Luckily I had a bit of rope with me and uh, yeah it was a pretty straight uh, bow not, lo not a lot of bow action but it worked pretty nice and um, the drill for this was actually a dead pine strangely enough uh, this was not the same wood as this I, I, I think this, because it is pretty light, I, I don't think this is a birch, I think this is an alder. And uh, so I used a pine drill in an alder uh, fireboard. I'm not one that goes on the species. You should, you should not actually select the wood based on species. You, you should select wood based on the characteristics. Because you just have to feel it and say, okay, this is going to work. And also you know that certain woods like, like pine and uh, uh, spruce, uh, they can have a bit too much resin. Pine is really, really bad, but, uh, but if you have like a dead spruce, usually you can get a good fireboard out of that. And then with a slightly harder drill or the same material that would work. But this one, actually a bit weird, it, it was pine but very dry pine and I, uh, it didn't screech or anything so this worked really great on an older fireboard. But it is not really strange why, why it isn't in our history here in, in, in the Nordic countries, in the Scandinavian countries and, and I don't think even in Europe all that much. Uh, all traditional fire making, primitive fire making, is done with stones. If you go back to the Stone Stone Age and uh, and so on, the only the only friction fire record that I found was in a book uh, where they were describing uh, an ignition method the Sama people use, which is using two bits of s seal skin on two pieces of wood, and then rub them together very hard so that they get hit hot. And once they are hot enough, they put the paper thin, as a wafer thin, inner bark of a, of a birch tree, which has a special name. It's the, the 
utmost inner piece of the bark. Uh, that, that piece has quite a, good, a lot of uh, uh, applications. It's really good on burn wounds and, 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 and that kind of stuff. But uh, it also has a very low ignition uh, temperature. So when they rub the seal skins together, they put this little bit on and then it will start slowly uh, smoking and burning. Not burst in flame, but then they can use that to make the fire. And that is actually the only friction, what I would call friction method that I know of. But lately we are very much focused on uh, friction fire and I don't know uh, really why but it certainly has to do with a lot of the TV programs where, where people present friction fire as a form of uh, survival knowledge. Which it certainly is because you saw today I made fire with basically only my knife. And, um, but it is uh, way, way easier to find stones and a piece of metal from your, uh, from your knife or in, uh, to make a fire. And that is the traditional method always been here, flint and steel. And before that, be before there was uh, iron and so on, uh, they would use stones as well. Well, I'm very happy with my fire now. And uh, when you want to make fire in these areas uh, where you basically do not have the right types of wood, go where beavers are where there is water, where there is sun and where there are beavers because then you will have the materials to make yourself a friction fire if you want to. And also it's a pretty nice area usually. So today certainly I would say beaver assisted friction fire. See you on the next one.